So what we're going to be looking at here is neutralization, neutralization in acid and base uh, reactions. Um, so when you combine an acid and a base, um, the products you're going to get are going to be a salt and water. Depending on what type of acid and base you start with, that's going to dictate um, the type of solution that you're going to obtain. So your solution could be neutral, acidic, or basic. If we start with strong acids and strong bases, okay, so strong, strong uh, neutralization process, you're going to end up with a salt and water. In this case, because we're starting with strong, strong, the salt that you obtain is going to not contribute to the overall pH of the solution. So you will get a neutral solution. <clears throat> now, if you start with a weak and a strong um, acid or base, you will end up with, once again, a salt and water Okay, but the salt that you obtain will affect the pH, and we'll discuss this later on. Um, but in this situation, uh, we started with a weak base, so or sorry, a weak acid. So our conjugate base um, will behave as a base, and you will subsequently get a basic solution. And we'll talk about the reasons why later. But for now, it's just good to know this. Um, so basically a neutralization process is one in which you mix an acid and a base. Okay, so generically here you'll end up with a salt and a water. A salt and water. Now the salts can be either neutral, acidic, or basic, and that's going to depend on what you started with. If you start with strong strong, you end up with a neutral solution. Um, anytime you have a weak strong titration, whether it's a weak acid or a weak base that you're starting with, um, that's going to change the pH to something other than seven. So this is just something to consider uh, for now. So what we'll see here with titration um, is basically a process that allows us to find out information about an unknown solution by using a known solution. Okay, so uh, usually we'll have an acid or a base down here. Uh, usually it'll be some sort of acid um, as well as a uh, indicator. So something that's going to change color um, upon the addition of the opposite acid or base. Okay, so basically what this allows us to do is we compare the concentrations here to the information we know about this solution. We could find out so information about this solution here. So basically we're just using a standard solution and we're determining the concentration of the unknown solution through this process. Now let's talk about some more of these details. During a titration, as I said, we have an indicator in our unknown solution. Um, and, and when we reach something called an equivalence point, okay, basically what you know at that point is that you have an equal amount of H3O plus and OH minus. Um, so basically, uh, neutralization um, has occurred. Now, we determine this by the fact that the indicator, the additional thing that we added to the acid or base that's down here, has changed color. So this process um, is obviously carried out visually. Um, we can pay attention to when we see this color change, and at that point we know that we've reached the equivalence point. So um, basically if we look at this titration curve here, um, we're starting with an acid down here. We know that because our pH is below 7. Up here um, in our Burette, we have our standard solution, which must be a base. We know that concentration. As we add the base, the pH slowly increases. Suddenly, you're going to see a sharp change in the pH. Okay, This point is your equivalence point. And then as you continue to add more base, obviously you continue on past the equivalence point, and it becomes more and more basic. Um, so... At the equivalence point, that's when we know we've neutralized the solution and that our H3O plus and OH minus concentrations um, have been added in equal amounts. So the acid and base are canceling out for neutralization procedure. Now, the fact that we know information about our standard will allow us to figure out information about um, our unknown concentration of our solution. Okay, so we utilize this type of equation. There's, there's multiple ways to do these types of calculations. Um, this is just a very straightforward way. Um, so M stands for your molarity. V is your volume. And N is the number of H plus ions in your specific acid um, or your number of hydroxide ions. 
um, in your base. Um, so if we were to look at this with a generic example, um, HCl, okay, HCl has one uh, proton that it's willing to, to donate, so the n value here would be one, okay, um, BaOH2, so barium hydroxide, um, it has two OH minuses, so the n value here would be two. So that's why we, what we mean by n is the number of uh, hydroxides or um, protons that the acid or base are going to be willing to donate. So let's go ahead and let's look um, at the uh, question below so that we can uh, practice uh, some example or an example of the problems uh, that we would utilize with titration. Okay, so let's first look at the question. Okay, so 42.5 milliliters of 1.3 molar KOH, so KOH is a base, are required to neutralize 50 mils of H2SO4. Okay, so um, basically we've added our known uh, concentration of our base. So our base is what is up, what is inside that burette, that big long container. Um, and the H2SO4 is what we have down in our Erlenmeyer, uh, along with our standard. Okay, so what they're wanting us to find here uh, is the molarity of H2SO4. Okay, so what I'm going to do with the equation above, um, I'm going to just put A's down here and B's down here to differentiate between the acid and the base values. Okay, um, so um, what do we know? Well, uh, we know MB, okay, it, they gave it to us as 42 point, or sorry, 1.3 molar KOH. Okay, we know our volume. Okay, they gave us 42.5 milliliters. Um, I'm just going to convert this to liters. Okay, um, and then N. In this case, KOH only has one hydroxide, so my N value is going to be 1. Okay, um, the molarity of my acid, I do not know this. This is what I'm solving for. That's what they're asking us to figure out. Um, the volume of my acid, okay, I know that um, they told us I had 50 milliliters, so I'm just going to convert this to liters. And then N, in this case, H2SO4. Um, H2SO4 is a diprotic acid, so my N value is 2. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to uh, go ahead and uh, <clears throat> plug these numbers into our equation. So MA, I don't know, 0 0.050 liters um, for my H2SO4. My N value is 2. That's going to be equal to my 1.3 um, molar KOH times my 0 0.0425 liters. Okay, and my N value is 1. So, if we go ahead and we manipulate the equation, um, <clears throat> our molarity of our acid is going to be equal to um, 1.3 molar times 0 0.0425 liters times 1 divided by 0 0.050 liters times 2. And this is going to give us 0 0.55 molar H2SO4. Okay, so this is one approach to this type of problem, um, utilizing this equation and just paying attention to um, the number of protons that your acid um, and the number of hydroxide that your base are going to provide in your calculation. Um, there is another approach and we'll look at that on the next slide. So on the previous slide uh, we had looked at these examples um, by utilizing this equation here um, and basically just considering the number of hydroxides and the number of protons coming from the base and acid respectively. Um, another way to approach this, which I think is the more um, intuitive or the, the <clears throat> one that will provide a better understanding of what's actually happening is to look at it from the perspective of neutralization. So if we take H2SO4 um, and mix it with potassium hydroxide. We know that when we put a base and acid together, we're going to end up with a salt and water. So this is subsequently going to give us um, K2 
K2SO4 plus H2O. Now, if we take this, if we take this uh, <clears throat> um, neutralization equation and we subsequently balance it, we'll, we'll notice something. So uh, let's look at this. Uh, K2SO4 we have right here, we have two potassiums. On this left-hand side, we only have one, so we're going to put a two out here. So by then balancing the potassiums, I've now increased my number of um, oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put a two in front of here. So this gives me uh, a total of four hydrogens. Okay, I have two hydrogens from here and two from here, that's four. Um, I have two oxygens here on this right hand side, so I have two oxygens here, one SO4, one SO4, and two potassiums. So I balanced my equation. Now when you look at this neutralization, uh, what you should recognize is the fact that now we have a relationship between the amount of acid and base that's required for neutralization to occur. So what this is telling you is that I need two equivalents of potassium hydroxide to neutralize one equivalent of H2SO4. So by understanding this type of reaction, uh, we can subsequently calculate uh, our molarity. So let's go ahead and let's proceed with that. So the first thing we want to look at um, is what we've actually been given. So what they gave us was our volume and our molarity of our um, base. Okay, so we know that. Now they're wanting us to tell them the molarity of the acid. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our known information, so in this case it would be our standard from an actual titration, um, and then we're going to utilize that information to calculate our molarity of our H2SO4. So Remember, we calculate our um, molarity of our unknown based on the equivalence point. And at the equivalence point, the amount of um, H3O plus, number of moles of H3O plus, is going to be equal to uh, the moles of your hydroxide ion. So if I can know um, the moles of one of these, I could figure out the number of moles of the other and subsequently figure out the molarity if I know the volume. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to first figure out the number of moles of what I've been given. So the complete information um, that I need to figure out moles of one of these two um, is based on the hydroxide ion. So I've been told that I have 1.3 molar okay, KOH, so remember that that means moles per liter. Okay, so I know I have 1.3 moles per liter, um, and I know my volume, right? I know that I have 42.5 milliliters of this 1.3 molar solution. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to convert that to liters. Um, I'm just moving that decimal. Okay, so moles and liters are present here. If I multiply these two numbers together, liters and liters are going to cancel, and that's going to give me my moles of KOH. So your calculator is going to tell you 0, 0.5525, okay, level 2 there. All right, so this is the number of moles of KOH that I have in 42.5 milliliters of 1.3 molar KOH. Now remember, at the equivalence point, my H3O plus and my hydroxide ion must be equal. Now, the thing you must consider here, though, is that Based on our neutralization process that we see here, there is not a one-to-one -one relationship between base and acid. Okay, It's actually a two-to-one relationship. So we need to use stoichiometry in order to figure out how many moles of H2SO4 we have present. So we're going to take our 0 0.05525 moles of KOH, okay, and we're going to use stoichiometry to get the number of moles of H2SO4. Now I want to be in moles of H2SO4, okay, and based on the balance equation, I have one mole of H2SO4 for every two moles of KOH, okay, and if I go ahead and plug this into my calculator, this is going to give me 0 0.0276 moles of H2SO4. Of course, we're going to do that dimensional analysis. You see your moles of KOH cancel out, moles of H2SO4 are left over. So this is our number of moles of H2SO4. So now we found part of the information we need to figure out what the question is asking us. So they want us to find the molarity. Now remember, your molarity is going to be based on the moles 
and volume of your H2SO4. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our moles of H2SO4 and divide by the volume of H2SO4. Okay, we're going to plug this into our calculator. And that is going to subsequently give us 0 0.55 molar H2SO4. And as you can see, this is the same answer we got from um, utilizing this equation on the previous slide. Um, basically, these are just two approaches. What I like about this approach is it allows you to utilize your stoichiometry skills. It allows you to understand what's physically happening. It's allowing you to see that you need two equivalents of this potassium hydroxide for every one equivalent of H2SO4. It allows you to understand that there's a physical uh, process that's happening here and not just a number chug and plug type of situation. Um, both approaches are absolutely fine. Um, the only problem I see with the previous approach is that if you plug in the wrong numbers for your n values, um, it's going to be more difficult to um, get the correct answer or realize you made a mistake because there's not as many checks and balances as you see um, in the steps here.